to today's video for the Bespoke Art and Craftsmanship Summit and what we have is a printmaker. Today we take everything for granted in the digital realm. You can pull up text on your phone, you can show it, send it, share it, but if you think back a you know, hundred years ago, this technology didn't exist and as a result things were manually printed or handwritten and what we feature today is a printmaker using that old style technology to carefully lay text one by one into forms so that it could be mass produced for newspapers or for the general population. And what's really cool about her is she's not only using the text, but she's using the artwork associated with that. So she'll make original drawings, carve them out, put them on the prints, and run those prints off. Just as a reminder, we are soliciting donations for this production. Everything you see here was donated by the artists themselves whether it was the URL, the website, all the production costs. If you feel generous, try to give back to those artisans because they really put their heart and soul into bringing this alive for you. So not only that, but some of those, a portion of those donations will be given to CNY Arts to pay it forward to other artisans as part of their Restart the Arts campaign, where it really helps those struggling artists from the effects of COVID and what happened to their businesses. So, you know, like I said, if you want to help support this cause, definitely go to the website bespokeartcraft.com, go to the support the artisans page, click on the donate button, and you know, choose whatever level feels comfortable for you to help support this artisans, but also to pay it forward to other artisans. So while you're watching these videos, maybe a question comes to mind like, oh, how did they do this? Or what's that? Or, you know, how can I do that at home? Well, we have a great opportunity for you. On Saturday, October 23rd, we are having a live session, a live Zoom session with all the artisans shown and featured. And that's your chance to kind of interact with them and ask them any questions you want. Get their feedback on to how it is to run their own business or how they work in their craft. And we'd love to have you join us. So again, Saturday night, live Zoom session. Get ready, sit back and relax as we watch Moon Rabbit Press. reasons people respond to my work are um, the bright, fun colors and also the sense of humor that I put in everything. Um, some of it's like puns and like dad, dad jokes, but some of it is just kind of whimsical and, and fun and lighthearted. I'm going to take my drawing, which I really like to draw on tracing paper. Um, it's really easy to transfer and if need be, if I want to make a little adjustment, like maybe readjust the angle of his wing, I'll just take another sheet of tracing paper over this, draw everything, re-angle and draw the wing. I just love drawing on tracing paper. I think it, it just makes the process so much easier. I'm just using the flat surface. I'm going over each area. When I see it in my yard or on my walks or whatever, it ends up in a print. And for the longest time, I didn't see any hummingbirds. <laughs> in my yard and then recently it finally happened i was doing some yard work and out of the corner of my eye i just saw something hovering and i look over and it was this hummingbird it was so cute and it was just like hey there it hovered for a couple seconds and then took off um i think it was visiting my bee bomb which i know they love um and i was just so excited so i decided hummingbird was next There we go. Obviously this is just pencil and it's gonna smear off really easily um, once I start moving my hand around it. So I take a fine point Sharpie and I go over my drawing again. The name of my business is Moon Rabbit Press. And at the time when I first started printing, um, I had two rabbits. 
George the Deaf Bunny and Suki, who came all the way from California when I moved back to Rochester. Uh, but I had found this little tiny rabbit that's called a cut. It's basically vintage clip art. It's like a little metal plate and it was this leaping rabbit. And I just started using it on, on everything I printed. So if I printed a, a greeting card, it was on the back. It said, printed by Chris Charles, and it had this little rabbit on it. Um, so I decided to utilize that rabbit in my logo. Um, so I knew I wanted something to do with rabbits. I realized there was an Asian folklore. It's actually in several different Asian uh, countries have this, this story about a, a man in the moon who comes down to earth and a bunch of things transpire but he ends up bringing the rabbit back up to the moon so where we have like the man in the moon they also have the man and a rabbit in the moon which i just thought was so sweet and so cute and i just loved the whole thing so moon rabbit press it was <laughs> but generally no matter what i'm going to start with outlining my image with my smallest gouge. And then when I go to clear away these areas, I'll switch over to one of my bigger gouges. But it creates a nice little channel, kind of a little buffer around my image. So I'm just gonna start in here. My file, that's P-F-E-I-L-E, -E, gouges. These are Swiss made, as it says right on the handle. <laughs> but they are awesome, high quality gouges. They feel great in my hand and they are absolutely essential for my linoleum carving. Um, I started finally investing in some real gouges a few years ago and boy oh boy did that make a difference. I mean, it's like cutting through butter. So obviously I started with a bird and this, this is a camera. <laughs> but the bird is going to take me several hours to finish, um, not only finish carving, but then I'm going to have to mount it to wood. Um, once it gets to that point, though, it's completely carved, it's mounted to wood, then we're going to have this, and this is what gets locked up on press. So this is what we're going to look at today, is printing these blocks to create my camera image. These presses were made to print metal type and wood type. And metal type especially, it was all made to a very specific height. It's called type high and it's 0.918 inches. Um, and I have this handy type high gauge, which will show me that's exactly the right height. Um, the right height means that when my inking rollers go across, they're gonna hit the surface properly. I have found that MDF, plus usually a few pieces of paper, plus my adhesive that I use, use equals type high. So we have a ton of presses here. Um, the ones that I use the most are Vandercook cylinder presses. They're proof presses. And most of them um, were built, at least the ones that we have, um, in the 40s and 50s. And they were used to just do proofs of, um, you know, set type. So whether it was like a newsletter or a broadside for a poster for, you know, the circuits coming to town or whatever, um, a newspaper or whatnot, um, they would just like set everything up, lock it in place on those presses and, you know, run a proof, see if there was any changes that needed to be made. And if everything looked good, um, it, if it was something really big, it might be, the final might be printed on those presses, but um, oftentimes it'd be moved to something more automated like the Heidelberg windmill press which is this crazy automated press that uses suction cups to lift up the paper and it spins it around and smacks it into your form and then more suction cups to deliver it to a delivery tray and there's like a thousand moving parts on this thing. It looks like it was designed by a mad scientist and it probably was, but it is a thing of beauty and it is so fun to use. Lock my paper in place. And again, before I even ink up the press, I'm gonna roll a piece of paper through and just double check my pressure. There we go. It's 
so you can't see it on here, <laughs> but there is a very slight impression, which is perfect. That's just what I want. So now when I ink it up, I'm going to go through and figure out if it's centered, if it's not, if it's a little crooked, I can make my tiny adjustments. So I mix all of my ink colors myself. If I wanted to make a very exact color, an exact Pantone color, we do have a guide that tells me what formula I need to use. So for this color, uh, Pantone 218, I need four parts of rubine red and 12 parts of transparent white. So then I can measure that out using a scale. And I will use this method for doing commercial work or if I'm working with a bride that wants an exact color for her invitations, 100%. But for my art prints, I like to wing it. Um, I have a background in painting and even when I was painting, I was always very interested in color and mixing my own colors. So that has carried right over into my printmaking as well. Um, so when I am mixing colors, I usually just do a little bit of the darker color into my lighter color. So in this case, I want kind of an orangey yellow. So I mix just a tiny bit of red into my yellow. So ink colors can be incredibly deceiving, especially if you're using transparent white. Sometimes it can look much, much darker than it is. Um, but even more opaque colors, like my yellow and red here, um, sometimes you get them on press and it just looks totally different than what you're expecting. So what I like to do is take a little bit on a brayer and test it out. Okay, so like I said, I'm just gonna do a tiny little bit. That's actually looking pretty much how I anticipated. It'll probably be a little lighter when I run it through the press because I brayered it on a bit thicker than what the press is gonna lay down, but that gives me a pretty good idea. Okay, time to ink up the press. I'm gonna dab my ink on this top roller. Start her up. I was pretending to work at my graphic design job that I had at the time, and I was flipping through a magazine and I came across an article about letterpress. I had never heard of letterpress, I had no idea what it was, so I was intrigued. I did a quick internet search and it turns out there was classes starting right down the street the next week. So on a whim, I signed up. I learned the basics of letterpress printing, typesetting, how to use the presses, um, and I absolutely loved it. It was the perfect combination of both graphic design and my background in painting. Um, I was a painting major in college, and at that point in time, I hadn't painted in a solid 10 years at least. Um, so I think I was really itching to find a creative outlet. It had just been too long, and this just fit the bill. It was a very uh, serendipitous. <laughs> Once the ink is dispersed, I'm going to take my, my press off impression, which means it's going to ink the surface, but not my paper. And I'm going to roll this over and just see how the surface is inked. Make sure. Make sure everything gets a nice coating of ink, which it does. Then I'll take it off impression, and we'll print a sheet and see how we're doing.
Um, I have my wood type here, which I've set up. I um, use my handy pica stick. That's how I measure everything. So I've figured out exactly how wide I need to build this out. Um, I've also added little spacing material in here. This is a ruler. Um, it has inches on it, but it also has picas, and some of them have points on them as well. Um, and that's a unit of measurement that's used a lot in letterpress. So when I'm setting stuff up on the press, ultimately, to keep things from jiggling around, I'm going to have to apply pressure from side to side and then top to bottom. And that anchors everything in place because there's an awful lot of pressure that is coming down through this um, carriage. So even the slightest little movement, things can pop up or your image can look a little wobbly and smearing. Sometimes I will print my type separate from my linoleum because it's really tricky to get it exactly the same height. Um, and even being off by like the thinnest little piece of paper can make a huge difference. It's crazy. <laughs> I've, there have been times where I've just added a piece of um, a page from like a, a phone book and just that thin little piece of paper makes all the difference. Suddenly it prints perfectly. Whereas before it is a little too light. So now I'm just going to fill this out. When I was just graduating high school that summer, uh, I was at a garage sale in my friend's neighborhood and there was this guy who had just retired from Kodak and he was moving down to Florida and he had a whole ton of vintage cameras and I thought they were so cool looking, but I was like, what am I going to do with a vintage camera? I just, I'll buy one. And of course, as soon as I bought one, I started seeing them everywhere. Especially when I moved to Boston, I don't know <laughs> what it was, but I would go to all these vintage stores or antique stores and they were just everywhere and I just couldn't resist. I, um, but in the end, I, I finally cut myself off probably about 10, 15 years ago, but I think I have about 60 or 70 at the moment. It's, it's bad. Okay, these are um, called coins, Q-U-O-I-N. And I'm just gonna tighten there, tighten the sides. Um, so I've got my paper locked in place here. There's guides at the top and the side. So it's always in the exact same place. This is really crucial for registering different colors so they all line up perfectly. And then we'll give it a go. And I didn't get any pressure that went too fine, so we should be good to go. To actually put ink on the press, I'm going to dab this beautiful red on. And this press uh, does run on electricity, which helps keep the ink evenly distributed. And to fire her up. No necessarily dream achievement, but I've always thought it would be so cool to have one of my prints show up in a TV show. Like just be randomly watching a show and see my print hanging on the wall as some character walks by their living room. So we'll see. If anyone's a TV producer out there, keep me in mind. So I'm going to take it off impression and just roll it over and make sure everything is inking okay. Looks great. Okay, time for the moment of truth. We're going to lock our print in place. I've already printed the three other colors, three other blocks. Here we go. Final color. Um, I did have one print recently that was really sweet. Um, at a show recently, a gentleman came in and he saw my daisy print, which is a dog lying, like sleeping with a little uh, tree branch over her head. And he said that his dog looked just like that. And unfortunately, it was the kind of the end of days for his dog. He 
wanted to buy this print for his wife as a way to remember their beloved dog. So I thought that was so sweet. Um, I made the print actually towards the end of my dog Daisy's uh, life. So it was just, it was a really bittersweet interaction with them. One way which we try to be a little more environmentally conscious is by using good old Crisco to clean our press. <laughs> so the shortening mixes with the ink and then we can just wipe it off and then we will use a solvent just to clean the greasy surface of the rollers. And then it's ready to go for the next time. I turn it on and just smear it on and let it, let it run its course here. So just like the ink was distributing through the rollers, now the Crisco is distributing through the rollers. Get this big roller at the bottom. With my paper, I always try to use something that either has a high um, recycled content or is 100% cotton, so it's a more renewable source. I also, if you order anything from me and it gets sent shipped through the mail, all of my shipping materials are reused. And also, um, just wood and metal type by nature is reusable for literally hundreds of years. Um, some of the wood type we have, have was made 100, 150 years ago. Um, and that's one of the things I really like about wood type is just getting to use it over and over again and knowing that it has this long history behind it. Apply some pressure and look at that. So that's pretty good. So one out of six done. <laughs> Uh, one of my most recent prints, my crow print, <laughs> was really challenging. Um, I had had an idea of how I wanted to do this crazy type setting, kind of letter bubble. <laughs> and it just took me many hours of brainstorming and eventually just trying a few things to get it to work. But I wanted to use um, spent type. So every letterpress shop has something called a hell bucket. And it's anytime there's metal type that gets damaged or orphaned, or it's just a typeface nobody's using anymore, it'll get thrown in the hell bucket. And eventually you take it to a foundry and they will melt it down and make new type out of it. So I went through and grabbed as much spent type <laughs> from our hell bucket as I could. And I got to work on figuring out how I could create this sort of organic shape and fill it with all this random type and still have some hidden messages moving through it. So when I had this organic shape, I had to figure out ways to build it out into a rectangle <laughs> so I could keep it in place on press. Um, and then there was just the act of putting all these tiny little pieces of type and getting them in and different angles. Um, I didn't want to create any obvious patterns. So some letters that were a little bit bigger, I tried to spread out a little bit. Two lines of type. One says, your inability to understand me is not a measure of my intelligence. And the second one is, and WTF is cook off. But things like crows are super intelligent, so maybe we don't understand all this, but they have their own way of communicating, and I think they're a lot smarter than we realize. I had heard about this uh, population of crows that had started mimicking people because so many people were saying caca to them that they started saying caca back to the people. And I'm like, they're just making fun of you guys. I do all my printing at the Flower City Art Center, which is located here in Rochester, New York. It is an amazing resource for this community. Um, 
In addition to the lot of press studio, we have another print studio upstairs where you can do etching and other um, relief printing monotypes. Uh, we share the first floor with the pottery ceramics uh, folks. There's also a community dark room. There's a digital lab. There's um, they do lighting and all sorts of amazing classes in everything. So I teach here. I teach lino cut. Um, sometimes I teach letterpress workshops. And then I also just pay them a monthly fee and I use their facility. If you want to support Chris, go to her website, moonrabbitpress.com. She has a lot of different prints on there. If you find something that you like, she is offering a 10% discount. If you put in the code word bespoke2021, between now and the end of October, she'll give you 10% off your order. So maybe you saw a print you liked throughout the video. Go check it out, order it, and give it to somebody for a present. You got the holidays coming up. And I know somebody could definitely use a laugh during this holiday season. Chris is also offering a chance to win a free print. So if you go to her website, sign up on her newsletter, you'll get me entered to win a free print in a, in a drawing. And you have nothing to lose at that point. So definitely go check it out. Again, her website is moonrabbitpress.com. We want to give you a heads up for tomorrow's video. It's the, if you're watching us during the week, it's the last video of the Artisans, but we still have CMY art, so definitely check them out. But their last Artisan video is a is um, the memorable image by Jamie, and she makes really cute greeting cards. She takes animals, toy animals, and puts them in unbelievable scenes. But what she does with each of them makes you laugh, and she makes them really come to life through her imagery. 